Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it on the channel, with many more like it to come in the future, so subscribe if you enjoy. As a matter of fact, most of the videos on this channel are way more scripted and basically way better than these types of videos, so there's actually even better quality content on this channel, so I'm also trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Also, drop a like so the video does better on YouTube's algorithm. But today, we're going to be talking about something that came out a few days ago, a day or two ago, and that was that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell have some beef, or really, it's more fair to say that Mitchell has beef with Rudy Gobert, because Rudy doesn't really have any reason to have beef with Mitchell. He's the one who is acting like an idiot. Basically, a report came out that the relationship between the two was irreparable. Mitchell had no interest in fixing the relationship because if you're unaware of what happened, basically uh, Rudy got the virus, I'll say, because you get demonetized if you mention it. And he was acting careless in the locker room. He did the whole thing touching the mic. Allegedly, he was coughing on teammates in the locker room, touching their stuff all over, stuff like that. And then Mitchell got the virus himself. So I think that's where this saltiness has stemmed from. And I gotta say, I understand where he's coming from. Now, a lot of people have gone out of their way to say, and I agree with the notion that even though, yeah, Rudy Gobert was acting like an idiot, he probably wasn't the reason Mitchell got the virus. There's even a real chance that Mitchell had the virus before and gave it to Rudy. You really can't say one way or the other, but it's certainly not a good look that Rudy was acting like such a fool and then all the stuff that went down went down. So I understand why Mitchell would be a little irrationally angry at him. And I didn't even say it's rational because he wasn't taking it seriously, even if he didn't directly cause any real harm, he was still acting like an idiot. So once this hit Twitter, a lot of people were suggesting like, all right, who are you trading here? And I think the clear answer there has to be Donovan Mitchell, even though I have very much been of the mindset in the past few years that the best player on the Utah Jazz is Rudy Gobert. And I still feel that way. However, there are a good variety of reasons why they should keep Donovan Mitchell. And I guess I'll just lift them, list them off here. First of all, Mitchell is way more marketable. No one really cares to watch Rudy Gobert unless you're a big fan of defense. Like, there were a bunch of people complaining about Rudy Gobert making the all-star team this year, even though realistically with how talent he is, talented he is, he should have been in the all-star game the past two years as well. But the reason for that is, like, no one wants to watch Rudy Gobert block shots and catch an alley-oop or two in the all-star game. Nobody's trying to see that. And Donovan Mitchell is just a way more fun player to watch. Scoring guards uh, who are really athletic just tend to be more fun to watch than rim-protecting centers. And on top of the marketability, Mitchell probably has a higher ceiling than Rudy Gobert. It's important to keep in mind that Mitchell is like, what, 24 years old, 25? He still has progress to make. Rudy Gobert has pretty much hit his ceiling. I don't see how he gets much better than he currently is, especially at the age that he is at. And then finally, and most importantly, Donovan Mitchell, his contract is not going to be an overpay when he gets an extension. Rudy Gobert, as much as I love the guy, or I love his play, I should say, because he's kind of an asshole as a person now, the way I view it, but as much as I love his talent, he's not worth 30 plus million, and because Rudy Gobert is eligible for the Supermax, he's certainly not worth the Supermax, or he would be making 60 plus million dollars a year. And on top of Mitchell just being the better guy to keep around, the, another issue would be that keeping Rudy Gobert would be an issue because that means you have to trade Donovan Mitchell, which again, way better to trade Gobert than Mitchell. But two, everyone in the league might actually hate Rudy Gobert because when he came out with, when it came out that he had the virus, there was one player that actually said something positive about Rudy Gobert if they said anything at all. And it was Evan Fournier saying like, oh, I hope he does better and wishing good luck and all that crap. And I think already Rudy Gobert wasn't that well liked and then he does this shit. 
Also, again, his emerging contract. I think this could be a blessing in disguise in that the Jazz will not have to give Rudy Gobert more money than he's worth. Also, Rudy Gobert has actually kind of fallen off a bit this year in terms of his impact. The Jazz haven't been as good defensively as they have been in years past. And really, the biggest selling point of Rudy Gobert is his defense. I guess I can defend Gobert a bit in terms of the positives of keeping him over Mitchell. Uh, Rudy Gobert, I think, is definitely a more impactful player now and especially in the past two seasons. Like, last two seasons is not even a contest. The Jazz have been a middle-of-the-pack offense with Mitchell as their leader, while Gobert has led the Jazz to a top defense every year as the defense's leader. So I definitely think Gobert's impact is more significant than Donovan Mitchell's. However, Donovan Mitchell, more marketable, younger, more worth the contract that he's going to get and not hated universally around the league. Uh, but Gobert being hated universally around the league also makes it harder to trade him. So you could argue maybe trading Mitchell will get you, well, not even maybe, trading Mitchell will get you a lot more bang for your buck. Whereas Gobert's value right now is pretty much at the lowest it's been since he's become a star player. Now, what trade partners would there potentially be under those circumstances? Well, there again is the issue of not everyone being a big fan of Rudy Gobert. So if you're trading for him, you have to be a team that's really not that concerned about getting free agents. Uh, because I think if you trade for Rudy Gobert, you're not going to be signing too many free agents because... Sadly, as much as as sad as this may be, or as maybe even unfair as it may be, Gobert is going to be remembered for this more than anything he does with the rest of his playing career. Like, this is going to be the legacy of Rudy Gobert. And that's just unfortunate, but that's what it is. So he's always going to have this following him, and having that reputation is not going to help you sign free agents with that guy on your team. So if you're a free agent market, probably not trading for Rudy Gobert. Now, I could see a team like the Atlanta Hawks making a trade for him, especially because Gobert is a perfect ying to Trey Young's yang. I realize they just traded for Clint Capella, but Clint Capella is a good enough defensive player to make you middle of the pack defensively. Rudy Gobert can make you the best defense in the league. And then I could actually, weirdly, because I think this team is pretty set in stone regardless, I could weirdly see the Boston Celtics, ironically, trading Gordon Hayward back to the Jazz for Rudy Gobert, as well as some picks. I might end up doing a video on some actual uh, more in-depth potential trade partners, but I definitely think the Celtics make sense because I think trading for Gobert would solidify them as a legitimate contender and Gobert would make their defense just ridiculous, like a defense with Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Rudy Gobert as your guards and forwards and center. Like, that is absurd. Kemba Walker is the only guy in that starting lineup that's not a good defensive player. Not a great defensive player, even. I could also see the Dallas Mavericks, although there have been rumors of Dallas being interested in signing Giannis Antetokounmpo like everyone else is. So trading for Rudy Gobert gets rid of that possibility. Also, I think the Mavericks have been cool with their center by committee role that they've had with Maxi Kleba and uh, what's his name? Powell. Dwight Powell, yeah. Charlotte Hornets or like the Detroit Pistons, those are the kind of franchises that you would see making a move like this. Just kind of like, we don't have much going on for us. We have decent assets, so let's trade for a top 20 player in the league. Uh, also, no, I do not want my Bulls to trade for them. I would wish, I really wish Bulls fans would stop suggesting it. I wish that idiot on Bleacher Report would stop suggesting it because I'm already confident in Wendell Carter Jr. to be at least 80% of the impact and talent of Rudy Gobert. So I don't want to trade him plus further assets to get Gobert. And then on top of that, the Bulls have $70 million in cap space in 2021. I don't want to mess that up by trading for Rudy Gobert. And even if we really wanted him, we could just sign him in 2021 without making a trade if that's what it came down to. I could see a world where the Pacers trade maybe Miles Turner for him. And I mean, 
I think that'd make them a better team for sure. And I don't think that the Pacers were necessarily a free agent destination. Maybe the or maybe the Orlando Magic just say, fuck it. We want to be the greatest defensive team of all time, but have zero offense. And they would trade like Nikola Vucevic for him. Uh, maybe the Blazers. I mean, I could see it, although I think they're just perfectly fine with Yusuf Nurkic. Although I think, again, kind of like with Trey Young, uh, Gobert would be the perfect ying to the yang of uh, Dame and CJ's poor defense, and I think he would really fill every hole they have on that end, and I think trading Nurkic for him would be worth it, especially because Portland's not really a free agency destination, but I'd probably think they just stick with what they have. That's kind of what Portland has always done, sometimes to their own fault, sticking with what they what they have. The Kings could maybe trade for them. That seems like a very Kings thing to do. It depends on if they view Marvin Bagley as a center or a power forward. I kind of can't really decide there because he doesn't really have the size of a center, but he doesn't have the versatility, even though he's a good ball handler. He's a good ball handler and shooter for a five, but not for a four. So I'd probably classify him as a center, I guess, but maybe you think you can make that work. The Warriors, I could see, although I don't really know what contracts they'd have to give him other than Andrew Wiggins, and I don't think the Jazz would want to do that. So I don't really think that one happens. It'd definitely be interesting, though. That would be a hell of a defense with Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, and Rudy Gobert. But we should also mention, I guess, to end this video, there is a world where Rudy and Mitchell are able to play together at the very least, and they can get over this. I think everyone's going a little insane right now, sitting in their houses. I'm snapping at people on Twitter over minor arguments and then looking back like, I don't know why I'm so angry right now. I think everyone has a bit of cabin fever. I think Mitchell's being a little mad right now, which is completely justified. And maybe a few months from now, this blows over and he can get over it. And the Jazz are going to be just fine with what they have. That's definitely a real possibility. I don't think it's... I think it's a little weird to just suggest that the Jazz are going to have to trade Rudy Gobert because really trades are not going to be happening for a long while and there's a good chance that, you know, time heals all wounds and this is going to be just a thing of the past, but there's also a chance that Donovan Mitchell just cannot get over this and the Jazz have to choose between him and Rudy and they are going to be choosing Donovan Mitchell. So... That's my thoughts on this whole Rudy Gobert potential trade situation, the Donovan Mitchell Rudy Gobert beef. But that's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the after music.